Hey, this is Terry from RC Tech. Uh, today I'm installing some mufflers, so I thought I would do a quick video on how I do this and a couple of things that will give you the best chances of success to not only keep them installed, but also keep them from leaking. Um, it's really a pretty simple process. There's just a couple of things you can do to uh, increase your chances of success. First thing we're going to do is I've got some brand new mufflers from DA. These are slimline mufflers. Um, and much like several other brands of mufflers, they are either tumbled or sandblasted. These, I believe, are tumbled. But it gives them sort of a satiny, a nice finish to them. Um, but that also leaves a finish on the mating surface that we probably necessarily don't want. We want a nice smooth finish on here to mate up with the engine. So we're going to go over and clean that up real quick. Okay, so what I have here is I've got some 220 and 320 sandpaper and I've just got it uh, it's sticky back so it's stuck to my workbench. And the, the key here is to make sure that you do have something stuck to a flat surface. You don't ever want to do this process by taking sandpaper on a block and doing it in your hand. It has to be on a flat surface. So what you want to do, and you don't necessarily need two grits, I'm just speeding this up a little bit. The 320 kind of polishes it, the 220 just kind of gets the nitty gritty done real quick. So what I want to do is grasp it firmly and push it down nice and flat. And you can do a couple of circles, kind of do some grinding, and then go at a, push it down and go at a 45. And then again at an opposite 45. So what that will give you is a nice smooth surface with a cross hatch. So it's a little bit coarse. What we want to do is go to our next sandpaper and do that same exact process. Okay, same thing. You can see it's a little bit more shiny. Um, now these mufflers, actually the texture was fairly shallow. Um, we got this one here. These are actually from a from a GP stock mufflers, and you can see that the texture on there is pretty coarse, and it looks cool, and it and it uh, really doesn't do a whole lot of purpose other than make them look nice. But it's very important to get that off. So I'm just going to show this since I'm since I'm here. I'm going to do that same process. Okay, so you can see the difference. Now we have a nice smooth surface with a little bit of a cross hatch that will help with the high temp silicone to, to hold on to it, but yet it's smooth so we don't end up with very micro holes basically for leakage to occur. So, all right, next step. Okay, now that we've got them kind of prepped, the next thing that can uh, really help with this is to make sure that everything is clean. If you're installing mufflers and everything is dirty, you're pretty much guaranteed that it's going to leak or come loose eventually. So what we want to do is take denatured alcohol and just put some on a rag here. And obviously we can't sand this surface, so that we want to at least make sure that it's as clean as possible. And it is, you know, from the factory, it's smooth, so I'm going to clean that up really good. Now this engine has been used, so in that case I highly recommend that you get some Q-tips and soak them with alcohol and run them down into the threads. So what the Q-tip will do is just drag any dirt out of there and it'll take several of them to actually get the job done. And when they go in and come back out clean, that's when you know you're good. That will help your bolts stay stuck. If there's a bunch of grime in there, it's just as you're setting yourself up for failure. So we want to take that rag and also clean our mufflers. Get all that sanding stuff off of there. 
Okay, and we get a nice shiny surface. Good to go. All right, so next thing we want to do is apply some silicone. Now this is my favorite. There's a lot of people that use other stuff. Sorry, it's not a brand new tube, but it's just the Loctite brand red high temp RTV. I actually get this from McMaster Car and it is on the, the RC Tech um, McMaster Car shortlist for shopping yeah, it's un under files up at the top of the page on RC Tech. So actually, um, you might see that I'm threading a bolt out of my silicone. If you use a, a bolt like this that has at least an inch or inch and a half of threads and it goes down in there, you're, you'll always be able to get silicone out. You'll never have to cut a hole in your tube or anything. You'll actually be able to use the entire tube. So when you're done, just thread this back in all the way and it'll always be ready to use. Quick tip there, save yourself some tubes of silicone. So what you want to do here is keep in mind that less is more. So we don't want to gob it on. You don't want to just pile a bunch on there. What we want is the thinnest layer possible to coat the surface. So we're going to just start with a dab and we're going to just kind of put it around here to get it off my finger. And then you want to just tap it around until it's coated. It's a little bit thin over there. I'm going to put just a little more. Okay. And we're going to repeat that over here. We want to do the exact same thing on our mufflers. Okay, now that we have that done, we want to wait. We want to let this sit for a while. Um, I'd say if it's warm out or warm in your garage, a minimum of 45 minutes, um, even overnight is actually works really good because then it sets up and uh, actually really works the best because then you're not going to have any squeeze out at all and actually creates a really nice bonding surface. Okay, it's been several hours and our silicone is well on the way to setting up. Um, it's at this point it's adhered decently to the metal surface that it's not going to squish out <clears throat> it's got some consistency to it you might be able to touch it lightly and not have it come off on your fingers other than a slight residue so that's a good time that you can move on if you don't don't want to wait overnight um, these are brand new mufflers so they came with brand new bolts but if you uh, are replacing used mufflers I still recommend that you install a new bolt. They're not that expensive and just then again the cleanliness of the new bolt and everything is going to help you out. Then I'm, I'm installing Nordlock washers, the cam, cam washers that are also in the McMaster car shopping list on RC Tech. Um, so what we want to do is put the washer on there and get those in into the muffler. Then what you want to do is slide your gasket on. Now I know a lot of people said, oh, I'm done with gaskets because they break and they, they fail. But they actually don't fail in the same way if you prep and, and use the, what we've done so far with the silicone. They actually don't get as brittle. Um, they don't tend to leak. 
you're sealing them, they actually work better. I've found with the process we've had I, that I'm using here, I've actually never really had one leak tremendously. So I prefer to use the gaskets. So I'm gonna slide the gaskets on there. Like that. Now what you wanna do is grab your high temp silicone again and go ahead and just push it on the bolt so that you actually coat the threads of the bolt like so. Like that. So now it's gonna look like that. So now you've got clean threads, clean bolts, and silicone. So in addition to the Nordlox, <clears throat> this is sort of bonding the bolt into the hole, increasing one more step against your chances of um, a muffler coming loose. So what you want to do is just start to install that. And you have to just put a little bit of thread at a time so that we don't lose all that silicone pushed up inside the bolt hole. Okay, now we're going to put a ratchet on here and snug these down. Um, some people use a torque wrench. I guess I'm just going to go from experience on these. Um, one thing one thing about the Nordlox is you'll notice if, you, if a day comes that you want to take these mufflers off, when you go to loosen them, it'll it'll feel snug and all of a sudden it'll give a snap and you'll might almost think for a second that you snapped the head off your bolt or something like that. That's actually just the cam of the two washers uh, letting go from each other. So that's actually a good thing because that's what keeps your keeps your mufflers in, installed. So so I hope you guys find this useful. Um, that's basically the process I've been using for a, long, a lot of years now and not had any issues at all. So um, if you do happen to, after this, um, find that you have a muffler coming loose, I guess first thing I would do is check, check your prop and make sure that your prop is balanced. Uh, make sure your spinner is balanced and do every, check everything. I mean, you should be doing that anyway but make sure that you don't have any vibration happening that is in excess of normal. Um, the other thing that you can do, and it, it would involve pulling your cowl off, but if you pull your cowl off and tighten your muffler and start your engine and get it nice and warm and then shut it off and immediately after shutting it off, tighten these bolts again and then let the engine cool. And what that's doing is letting everything expand to its maximum expansion um, because your muffler is going to expand at a different rate as your engine parts and everything else. So that's going to give running temperature expansion, tighten them up, and then let the engine cool, put your cowl and stuff back on, and that is one other step you can go. But usually don't do that unless you're having a, a chronic issue with mufflers coming loose. But by all means, check that prop and spinner assembly first. So hopefully this is all useful for you. Thanks for watching.